prayed on it, and it continually came to me. And uh, when I looked up the name of Hercules, you know, it told me who Hercules was, but when it gave me the meaning, it meant a glorious gift. And that's absolutely what we give to our customers, that it's a gift. If we can get them qualified for our program, we're saving them money, making their place look great. I mean, what kind of gift can you get better than that? Where would somebody start, or how do you identify these kind of businesses? Anybody with lighting that's on long hours, car dealerships, restaurants, grocery stores, gymnasiums. I mean, we've done jobs. I've seen the Y. You've done the Y. Yeah, we did the YMCA yeah. Boardman. We did Camelot Lanes. We did Michael Alberini's restaurant, Taylor Kia. I mean, the list goes on and on, and people love what we do. Uh, what we do is we, we break the job up monthly so that they can pay for the project with the money they save in electric. And, and even while they're paying for the project monthly, they're still putting money in their pocket every month with the savings because it exceeds what the monthly project cost is. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what we do. So it's an easy way for them to get into the business, Yeah. into the product. It's, it's an easy way to get them in. Right. With this program, if we can get them qualified for the program, there's no upfront capital expenditure needed. This, we break it up monthly so that the project, the, the savings will pay for the project. So if I came to you, let's say two years ago, and said, hey, Gary, I can cut your business, I can cut your electric bill in half, you'd say, that's great. What do I got to do? Well, you'd have to write me a check for the project. Five, ten, twenty thousand dollars, whatever it is. And hope you recoup it on the back. And I hope you recoup it over, you know, there's a return on investment over so many years. What we did is we made it simple for anybody to do. You keep your capital, keep your money, and let the savings pay for it every month. It's easy breezy for everybody. Entrepreneur from Camel area, how did you get started though in into doing this? Well, you know, I, I've been in sales all my life, and um, I've been in the health club industry. I sold office products, but um, I started working for an LED lighting company about four years ago. And I learned the trade, and I just found a better way to do it. It's a better product. Um, the business model's better. Uh, it's, a, it's a better um, cost price point for the customer. It's just an effective solution that everybody's taken advantage of in the area. Is it residential or just commercial? Mainly? We, we do commercial. We started off just commercial, but we are opening a showroom in my office on South Avenue where we're going to do residential. We're, we're not going to come to your house. You can come to the showroom. You can take a look at the balls. We'll teach you how the colors work. So we'll anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll help you. You know, if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they're just going to say you a bulb in a box. You don't know what you get. We're going to teach you. This is the color. This is what you need versus what you have. So we're going to educate you on it before you spend your money. Because LEDs aren't cheap when you're paying for them out of your pocket for your home. But you're, the, you're going after the commercial business. Yeah, then. the commercial business where it's at. You know, it's, it's quantity. So we're going to go after you know places like the Y where there's thousands of tubes rather than go to somebody's house for sure. you know, 10 or 20 bucks. Now, am I correct? You're opening up a Florida office? Yeah. We're, so you're doing successful here. Yeah, right? we're doing really well. We, um, we, we have an office that's, that's in Cleveland right now. Okay. We started in Youngstown. We have an office in Cleveland. I have guys working in Cranberry making their way towards Pittsburgh. We just sold a job in Pittsburgh. Um, it's going to be our segue into that market. And then in, after the first of the year, we're going into the uh, Jacksonville area in, in Florida so we're gonna open up an office there uh, where you locate I know you have a presence on Facebook anywhere else yeah we're on Facebook uh, we have a web page it's www.herculesled.com um, we have uh, you know commercials on TV we're all over the place we've got bulletin boards uh, people are starting to know who we are we're starting to become a household name it's pretty cool and your office is on South Avenue at address um, it's 5922 South Avenue suite 2 in Boardman it's uh, right across from Pat Catan's, where, where they used to be. Yeah. It's, um, it's up the Amish the place is over there. Yeah, right across from the Amish place, up by Sam's Club. Right. Um, we are franchising as well, so we're going to be opening up franchise offices all throughout the, the nation. Um, so we're excited to get that going. Phone today. number for the business? 1-844-HERC-LED. But uh, they can find you on the web or, or on you Facebook? You can find us on the web or on face, Facebook. <laughs> um, we're all over the place, man, and we'll, we'll come right out and see you. Great. Jimmy Rose at Hercules LED. If you get a chance, check it out on the website, Facebook, or go to his office on South Avenue in Youngstown. We're going to be back with more from Kelly's Bar, Yards After Contact. Hercules LED is an energy-efficient company that has saved organizations of all sizes an average of 62% in electricity. Our energy-efficient program allows businesses to convert to LED with no upfront money. If you'd like to learn how to save your business money in energy costs, call Hercules LED at 1-844-HERC-LED. That's 1-844-HERC-LED. And welcome back to Kelly's Bar in Mahoney Avenue in Youngstown. This is Yards After Contact. 
I'm here with Boardman head coach Joe Ignazio. And Joe, congratulations. That's, that had to be one of the uh, ex most exciting high school football games I've seen in, in quite some time. And it makes it even more special because it's against a rival, uh, at least a backyard rival like Cardinal Munia. What were your thoughts, Coach, when Travis Kuntz made that touchdown catch? And you, did you realize then you had the victory in hand? Um, we, we still had to kick off, and there were a couple plays after that that your heart's pounding a little bit. But uh, You didn't want an onside kick or nothing, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Probably had a better chance of getting there. <laughs> but, uh, no, really happy for our kids, our community. Uh, it's been a long time coming, um, but really excited for them. Did you imagine it in your wildest dreams? I guess anybody outside of the Boardman locker room probably didn't give you guys a, really a fighting chance to get that victory. I, I don't mean to insult you by saying that, but uh, was that the kind of vibes that you guys were getting uh, from your perspective? I mean, as a coach, you, you, you kind of keep your eye on those things and use them as motivation when you can. And, you know, peaked at the Vindicator and saw everybody had, had picked Mooney and, and posted that up in our locker room and uh, taped it to the wall in the locker rooms at YSU. So, yeah, I mean, any edge you, you feel like you can get as a coach, you'll use it. How did you feel about the game as a head coach? What were your thoughts going into the ball game? Uh, we felt we had to throw early and often. And, uh, you know, we completed a big, long touchdown to start the game. And then kind of went flat for, for a quarter and a half. They, they did some things uh, that caused, caused some havoc with our, our pass protection. and. Uh, you know, we got things back on track the second half, started rushing the ball much better than the first half and, and, and moving Kobe Adupoku down the field. And, you know, obviously with Travis opened some things up in the past game and, and felt like we, we put ourselves in a good position that if we played 48 minutes, you know, we had a chance. Boy, that big play right out of the block, maybe second play of the game, was it? Yeah, second play. Matt, uh, Michael O'Hara to, to Barone? Yeah, Austin Barone uh, for 73 yards, and it was uh, – you know, they, their, their defender got a hand on it. Our kid just did a great job of uh, keeping his eye on the ball and concentrating, and, and we, we, we got one to pop. Just like he drew it up, huh, Coach? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Had to be an exciting way to start the game, obviously, for you guys. It, it was. The, the, did it change anything? Or? No, you know what, but you, you never know how your team's going to react to that. Uh, you know, I go back to, you know, the national title game when Tank Gid scored the, the long touchdown run, yeah. and then you kind of get flat to yeah. so you want to make sure your kids are staying in the game, and I, I don't know that we handled that as well as I thought we should have, but uh, came back the second half and, and handled things very well. How did you feel in the first half? Did you, did from your from a coaching perspective, did did, did it feel like Mooney was getting the upper hand at, at, at times? After or? after that touchdown, I thought definitely uh, we knew they were a physical football team. Um, Anderson I, was was running hard. Hewlett was running hard. Yeah, they they have, you know. A couple of the better guys in the area. The Hewlett kid, you know, Unbelievable. is I think one of the better kids in yes. the area. Um, so hats off to him. And their yeah. linebacking core is is pretty good. They run downhill and they'll be physical. And and they gave us fits. So um, you know, we made some halftime adjustments and and we were able to come out on top. What was the mood in the locker room? How did you feel as a team? Um, you know, we've never had them down early, and we were able to do that. And you know, they took the lead, and we felt. You know, our kids were right in there. You know, the last couple of years, we had been close at halftime. It just, our kids needed a finish. It seemed like we'd come out the second half and had a letdown, gave them a score, and, uh, you know, kind of let up after a score. And, and this time, you know, they had a score again, and our kids kept battling and, and stayed in it and gave themselves a, sh a chance to win. Did, did, did it seem at any time, you know, that they were getting the game was getting away from you, maybe at all. Uh, we threw that that late interception, and I thought, you know, we were getting short on clock. Um, we were able to get it three and out and, and get the ball back, and because it was 26-14 at that time. Yeah, uh, they, they had put another touchdown on the board. We're down by 12, and you know, we had just thrown an interception, and you're looking at the clock, thinking with eight minutes left, you know, you may not have another opportunity if two. Uh, and, and but things were going crazy, Ren, right? Back yeah, and forth. Things started unraveling, and, and you know what? We started getting a little physical and pounding the football, and, you know, um, thought we did a good job at that. We popped the score, you know, on fourth and one, and, you know, football gods fell in our favor. We recovered the onside kick and, and put ourselves in a really good position to win the football game. Time was dwindling on you guys. It, just to get the one touchdown, it seemed like, well, it might not be enough, but what was the strategy? Is this uh, – Practice? Did it go the way you practiced? Um, 
No, it, he's it never, an offensive guard, right? I mean, it, it, it never goes the way you practice it. I mean, we, we that, that we onside took, kick. We took our left guard this that week and, yeah. and made him a kicker, and just like that, he had done it at the lower level some, and but we had a kicker get injured, and we're we were kicking a freshman, and you know, you just how did you it have go? To adapt. You have to adapt. Go kick an onside. Is what, what did you say? No, I mean we obviously had a practice in, in, okay. in, during the week, and and you have a turf field. Yeah, we have a turf field. Um, so he got some practice in during the week on Monday, and again on uh, Wednesday. And you know, you never know how it's going to roll, but it rolled in our favor. Did and, you think uh, at all thinking. during the week that that was going to have any significance in the game? No, no. And even even if you think that, you're praying that it doesn't come down to that. But uh, it did, and, and we executed. How perfect was that kick? After you've seen it on film 10 times, 15 times? It, it's perfect. It, it takes those two hops that you want an onside kick. It pops up in the air. And uh, it, it's crazy because you look at a kid that you don't anticipate kicking, is kicking the ball. Let's give his name. He's Steven Taylor, our starting Very deserving of being, Very deserving. Getting kudos on and, that. And then the kid that recovers at Kelly Washington is, you know, a senior. He's a kid that doesn't see the field a whole lot. He's our scout team running back. And he's just very selfless, willing to go in there against our first team defense and run all week at scout. And you know, we tell our kids, next man up, be ready when your opportunity comes. And and the kid just buys into everything that we tell him. And you know, uh, it's a testament to him. How much was luck, and how much was practice on that kick? Can you give a percentage? Was it was it really lucky? I mean, yeah. But you know, sometimes you're better to be lucky than good. Right? You know, win's a win, and we'll take it and say whatever you want. Our, our kids fought to the end. You, you still had, you got the ball, you still had to score. But yep. let, let me go back. Yep. Fourth down play, was that on the, a, a, do, a Kobe drive, right? Right. Talk about that. Michael had to make, make a huge fourth down yeah, completion I mean, to keep that. You're down two scores. Yeah, we had a fourth and 12 we needed to yes. convert. We converted that, and then the, the earlier touchdown was fourth and one. We thought they had messed up the, the scoreboard red third down. So we're making play calls based on third down. Then we find it's fourth down. Um, referees had a different. They're, you know they've had some issues with the scoreboard, and uh, you know we decided to pound it in. And Kobe, great effort to get in from the one, and it was close, but you know it fell our way. But if you don't get that completion on fourth down, you're you're done, right? Right. No, you don't. And then uh, you know our special teams were were fairly sound for as much as we think we struggled. You know our, our kickers have put the ball through the uprights. Um, didn't necessarily happen, you know, on, on the other side of the ball for them. You know, I thought, you know, two missed extra points were huge, and then we held them on a, a two-point conversion, and, and that ends up being the decisive factor in the game. So you still get the ball off the onside kick, and, and Michael Hara gets a job there. And everybody says, well, he just threw the ball up to Travis. There's a lot of that, – that's their play now, right? I mean, they, they've I mean, done that in week one, even though they've got penalties, right? Yeah, I mean, and when, when you look back at film, the pressure they were giving us, Michael has to do a good job of standing in there and, and having the arm strength to get the ball to a receiver like that, you know, but it helps having a 6'5 kid that's athletic and has a background in basketball and things like that that can go up and get it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when you watch that last play, it's two defenders on them, and, you know, we're not being shy of letting them know that we're going to yeah. throw it to Travis and went to him three straight plays, got a pass interference on the first one. We get down to the four-yard line. And, and we were in a situation, no timeouts left. I didn't feel like we could run the ball and, and take the chance of running out the clock. So we were going to put it up. To so our that was boy. that was the play call. There was yeah, no was, other options. No, that was that was the play call. It was either going to fall in our favor or it wasn't. Now, can you uh, tell us about Michael, a sophomore quarterback, won the job in the spring? How how impressive was his performance to beat a team like Cardinal Mooney like that? Good, you know. It, and I don't want to just give it the no, victory to him, but. He no, played an integral part in that, in that yeah, victory. You know what? I, I, I talked to him after, and I was impressed that it, it was easy after that first touchdown throw for him to kind of get frustrated. And I saw it a little bit at times on the sideline. And, you know, we had some things not go our way. He, in, he threw the interception. But for the most part, kept his composure. As a sophomore, you know, most kids may have tanked in that situation. But kid's a competitor. He's got a wrestling background. And, you know, I used to coach. And I love that that competitiveness in guys like that. And, uh he showed that all the way to the end. Can he run more? He could, but you know I don't want to put a, a lot of that on hurt? our shoulders. Yeah, I mean, don't you know we, we pick and choose when we're going to run them, and 
you know, feel like we've got a good back and we've got, you know, some good backups at back that we can pound the rock with and, uh, you know, want to keep him healthy for the past game. But, you know, he, he's run a good number of times, um, whether it's a, it's a pass play that he tucked it and ran or designed run for him. And he's had some success and good, good yards per carry. Uh, you know, he, he's being efficient right now as a young kid, and we're happy with that. Now, one game does not a season make, but it, it was a big win. Mm -hmm. How big was it? Uh, what big, does it I mean? mean? It, it keeps everything in perspective for, for your goals for the season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our kids obviously are excited with the rivalry. And, um, you know, so, so there's the, you know, and that's more. It was for big the, for a lot of reasons. Yeah, right? it's big for a lot of reasons. Take you know, your kudos I'm, here right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, it's, it, you know, hats off to them. They're a great program. They've had our number for years. Yes. Um, but it's seven, eight in a row? Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, you know, like everybody's that. been asking me, and I can't remember. And, I think we talked know. about that last week. I think it was seven or eight in a row, I think. Yeah, did. and I don't want to misspeak on what year and who it was and everything else like but that. But they had but your they, number. Let's. Yeah, they, they've had our number. And, you know, I, I we, we sold our kids. You know, we opened up the new stadium with a loss to them, and uh, 